Hi, I want to talk to you about corsage construction and how to put together a small corsage. Uh, I don't think corsages should be so large that they actually pull on a woman's clothing. Um, and so many people are getting away from wearing corsages uh, just for that very reason. They don't want the corsage pin to pull a permanent hole in a dress or a blouse. Uh, but still, some people like them, and it's great if uh, women are wearing uh, a jacket they can pin to the lapel. Uh, so let's look at construction. Uh, I'm going to use a chrysanthemum. Uh, this is something with a flat head, so we need to wire that. Uh, all flowers need to be wired when you're making a corsage because you want uh, smaller stems than what the flower actually has. So I have cut this off to, I guess, about an inch below the flower. Uh, with flathead flowers like the mums, I'm going to push my wire right up through the stem, like so. And then I'm going to make a tiny little hook. That's what we call a shepherd's hook. Just like that. And gently pull that back down into the center of the flower and it will disappear. Just like that. Now we have our artificial stem. I need to tape that so that the flower and the wire are secure together. Start right below the flower head. Gently pull this tape and have it adhere to itself. Uh, it does not have a sticky side. I'm only going to go down a couple of inches, tear that off, and then we have a nice thin stem that we can use for our corsage. Foliage I'm going to use is lavender, and that's from the garden. Sometimes I use rosemary. Uh, lots of different foliages can be used. Uh, don't like to use anything that has leaves that are very large. Uh, and the nice thing about lavender, you have a little bit of fragrance there. Same thing with the rosemary. Uh, this stem needs to be cut shorter, and I normally cut that at an angle. And that way it blends in nicely with this artificial stem that we've created. I'm going to put that right behind the mum, and then I'm going to tape it on. Same technique but I only have to tape it down as far as the lavender stem goes. I don't have to go all the way down to the bottom where I taped before. So now we have something that could be a boutonniere, but we're gonna put several of these together to actually make the corsage. I've already done some of these ahead of time so you can see. And I like to have graduated sizes when I'm working with flowers, whether it's roses, uh, miniature carnation, um, mums, whatever. If you have a graduated uh, sizes of flowers, you can sort of see the progression from bud down to a larger bloom. Uh, and again, that helps keep the corsage fairly small. Uh, with construction, you want to start at the top with the smallest bud. This one, and then I'm going to add the medium sized flower next to it. Now that we have these stems wired, we can bend the stems in whatever direction we want. So I'm going to bend this one slightly forward with the smaller bud facing towards the top and the one in the middle will be facing forward. I have to secure them with the corsage tape or stem wrap. Again, stretch that, twist and push them all together like so. And I still have that nice thin stem at the back. Now we want to add our largest flower at the bottom. And you could do this with as many flowers as you want. I normally keep it to about three, sometimes five, uh, depending on the size of the corsage that I want to make. But I think three flowers is large enough for a little corsage. So I've arranged these in a slight little crescent here. I want to get this secure by taping it together. Like so. And now the corsage is made, but we need to add a bow because corsages are for women and we put bows on those. Boutonnieres are for men, no bows on those. So I have cut a short piece of ribbon and I am going to put that under the stem and tie it. And I'll lift this up so you can see. I used to make the bows uh, ahead of time and wire them and then... Uh, twist them onto the stem, but I found that that just created more bulk and made the stems fatter. So with this method, we're actually tying the ribbon to the stem 
and that way we're not adding any more bulk. So now to make our bow, and this is where a lot of people have issues uh, bow making. Uh, keep my ribbon on the spool. Start with a short tail between your thumb and forefinger. You're going to give that a half twist and make a small loop. Keep your loops and your bow in proportion to your corsage. So since this is a very small corsage, this is not going to be a very big bow. Uh, just zigzag back and forth, making loops on each side. And I think for a corsage this size, I'm only going to need about three loops on each side of the bow. So here's our third loop. And then with some nice sharp scissors, we'll cut that off. And then I can just lay my bow down on top of that ribbon that we've already tied on there. And this is where you have to be careful. Hold it with your pinky, twist it around, and tie it down. Uh, sometimes if you have a friend to help you, this works even better. Uh, and there, well, almost. There we go. Pulled right through and snug that down. Cut off any excess ribbon. See how that's hanging down? We're going to cut that off to be the length of the others. That and now we can fluff our bow up a little bit, like so. Then we would add a corsage pin to that, and that can be pinned onto a woman's lapel, just like that. But I've left my stem straight, and I want to curl that up a little bit using my little tiny chopstick because I don't want that wire poking into someone's dress or jacket. So I've curled that stem just a little bit and now that is ready to pin on and ready to go to your event. So tiny corsage, ready to roll.